This is a brunch pre-Oscars mini podcast. It contains spoilers, but we can't imagine you care if you haven't seen the movie and you're afraid of spoilers. There's no way you would logically seek out a podcast about the movie. Hey, we're going to begin. Let us do it. Past Lives. Written and directed by Celine Song in her feature directorial debut is what I'm going to call a gourmet rom-com about two childhood friends who re-enter one another's lives as adults. It has a runtime of one hour and 46 minutes, a Rotten Tomatoes score of 96 with an audience score of 84 and is tied with Maestro for the worst betting odds to win Best Picture at minus 10,000. That hurts a lot because I'll be honest, I got into this movie at uh, minus 6,500. Anyway, Past Lives is nominated for two Academy Awards, Best Picture and Best Original Screenplay. Hi, Pete. Hello, David. I will tell you what. This movie may have the longest odds for Best Picture, but it is my favorite, my absolute favorite movie of the year. I fucking loved this movie yeah we reviewed this movie i couldn't find any of my notes or any it's as though this movie just came and vanished and like that's kind of how it existed when it came out where it came out you saw it you were like yo see this movie gotta see i saw it we discussed it we both liked it i remember you loved it i really liked it and there was maybe like a three-day conversation about this movie and then until it was nominated for Best Picture, like crickets. You know, but it's it's like one of those ones that kind of slipped through the cracks a little bit, but to the but like sort of in the great way where when somebody starts talking about it or mentions that they just saw it or like tweets that they're going to watch it, just something inside of you sparks and you're like, fuck yes, another person that I get to talk to this movie, talk to about this movie. And this movie is one of those movies that you know. Everybody is going to love it. And if you don't love it, something is wrong with you. Oh, no. I know a lot of people who did not love it. Are you serious? Yeah. Like, every person that I've brought it up to, other than you, to be honest, has been like, yeah, I, I, I wanted more. I oh, oh, I can't imagine anybody not loving this movie. Yeah. I, I, I think that it's it's above. It's not a. So I, I said it's gourmet rom-com. Think of it as like what five guys is to or like tasty burger or whatever shake shack whatever you're up in a choice there is to like fast food where it's a love story a will they won't they a people re-entering each other's lives thing rom-com ish but it's done very well that said it is not a 900 dollars steak dinner it's not like gonna make you think too hard it's nothing too deep but it is very emotional and you connect with it even though like I've, I've not been a uh, Korean person who moved to Canada and left behind the, the 12 year old. And I was 12 when I did it. So I'm not saying this inappropriate, like the 12 year old <laughs> for whom I had feelings or whatever. Yeah. And you're like I, I, I've not been either of these people, but you feel like you've been both of these people. Okay. But it's, it's not a Michelin star restaurant, Yeah, but it does uh, like, comfort food the best fucking comfort food you've ever had in your life exactly it does its thing that like i said like a hamburger you're like yeah whatever you know what this movie is this movie is the hamburger that rafe finds makes yes. in yeah, yeah, yeah. The, menu. the menu yeah yeah um so this movie will charm your pants off in the first half an hour i remember starting it uh pressing pause about 20 minutes in and texting you going this movie is the most charming movie I've ever seen in my life. Uh, it is so charming. It is so sweet. It's a love story, but it's like a love story that is rooted in raw realism. And the way that they portray and paint the picture for very authentic characters is where this movie makes its money. It is a movie about real people, real characters with like real human conditions, and it treats them with the appropriate respect and like empathy and everything that you could want in terms of like seeing somebody for who they are both positively and negatively and the writing is just so good all of these characters you mentioned like you didn't grow up in korea or whatever like you don't you're far removed from the stories of the people that are here but they're so authentic and they're such the writing is so good and the story and the way that they react to it is so relatable that you can kind of plug and play. 
And I feel like whenever there's any sort of uh, like unrequited love story, it's just fodder for who's right, who's wrong, who's being this or who's being that, and no one's being anything. And on paper, you could say that like, yeah, is uh, the the male character? I think Hai Sung is his name. Mm-hmm. Like, is he kind of being sad? Yeah, because he's sad. Yeah. Like he's bummed about this thing, and yeah, on paper, he probably shouldn't think that he's going to end up with this person that he hasn't seen in a bajillion years, and they've lived complete lives without each other. And yeah, maybe it's a little far fetched for him to feel the way about the situation he does, but it's not like he's this horrible, like jealous, Stalker, like clingy, what? Yeah, yeah, right. Like he's he's holding on to a dream that. Not going to happen. He's romantic about somebody who has a lot of sentimental value and, like, is part of his story and his growing up in his world. And she d- she doesn't take that as, like, a, oh, this fucking albatross of, like, my past or whatever. She's, like, she appreciates him and she obviously appreciates her husband. Shout out the guy from uh, The Big Short, by the way. Mm-hmm. The, his the, name is Arthur in the movie. The third person in the movie. Yeah. And I, I love the performances from uh, Greta Lee, and uh, I don't know the male lead's name, but the performances are good, but mainly this movie is writing. And yes, and the the third person in this movie is probably the most important person in this movie because that's, to me, where this movie solidifies itself as being a elite, elite piece of writing because it's so easy to make that third person in, in any rom-com make them the villain, make them the hurdle, make them the obstacle for this story. And the way that this movie treats Arthur is just like what solidifies it as an amazing movie to me because he's not treated as the villain. He has like his insecurities, his jealousies, his concerns, his self-doubts, but it's handled in such like a mature, reasonable way for like this situation. And it proves that like you the quote unquote villain is not necessarily a villain. It's like Oh yeah, and he's never positioned as I can't remember what the movie is, but within the, like the last five years, there was another movie like this where someone is going after somebody and there's somebody else in the way, but they never do the cheap thing of and this person is wrong because of this thing, where it's like in real life, that's not at least in my experience how it happens maybe you might feel in the moment like oh she's with the wrong guy and here's why i'm better or whatever but like most likely you hope like she's with a pretty good person right and like this isn't about that they're the bad guy and what i love is that you as the viewer are kind of waiting for that to happen you're waiting for arthur to get turned into an asshole you're waiting for him to get turned into a villain and then what happens is so they're both writers in this movie um and Arthur and uh, and Nora are both writers and what happens is as like this story unfolds Arthur directly uh addresses that like hey wouldn't this be a great story like you two getting together and like in that story I would be the villain and he directly addresses it to Nora and to the viewer. You remember, and, he's like and, not breaking the fourth wall, right? Not breaking the fourth wall, but he kind of is. He's like basically talking to you directly you guys all as seeing the viewer, this? You're right? And it's it's a great piece of writing because it makes you feel like a fucking idiot as the viewer, where he's he's directly calling out what you're thinking and what you're waiting for, and he's like, "But this is real life. Wouldn't this be gr- wouldn't this be a great story? But this is real life, and you're like, ah, oh, shit, yeah, it is." Yeah. yeah, you're right. This is real life, and these are real fucking characters. These are real human beings who are talking about the way that this is developing, and it's so great. Got to quickly note, this is a Facebook movie. Stuff goes down on Facebook. That's true. Because this takes place in 2012. So how does it go down? Facebook, that's how, you big dummy. Uh, I'll say this. I mentioned that I placed a wager on this movie to win Best Picture Once Upon a Time. Is it looking great? No. But there are only two movies I've seen other, I mean, I've seen all the Best Picture movies. Oppenheimer is going to win Best Picture. Okay, we all know that. If you said give me another movie, I would say Poor Things. Mm-hmm. If you said 
Now give me a dark horse. I would say past lives because while the fact that it's not nominated for other stuff, it's only got one other nomination says that it's just not being thought of that way. This, if I, if I didn't know all the other nominations, I would say this kind of feels like the type of movie that at the very least gets nominated, drive my car, Banshees of Inisherin, that gets nominated and can win. Banshees could have won. And I do think like I think that if you're comparing this to past Oscar nominations, it's a cross between Drive My Car and Banshees of Inisherin because it's got like the looking into the past, the lost love thing, and it's got the is this me? Mm-hmm. Is it the situation? What is this? I just wish it could be different. Uh and those two movies were held in very high esteem. I don't think this movie is going to win Best Picture, but if I only had to give you three, I would say Oppenheimer, Poor Things, and this one. I would say those two, and I would have a tough time deciding between this one or The Holdovers, Mm. Um, but I I do think that this movie is slightly better than The Holdovers in its writing. Like The the Holdovers is a bit cliche at some points, but like just really turns the charm on overload. This movie has the charm and the writing. And uh, I I love this movie so much. You love it more than me, so handle the positives. Uh, Positives, extremely charming and sweet. It's a love story rooted in raw realism with very authentic characters. Uh, There's no villain. And uh, it looks great. And last but not least, absolutely massive lead performances oh yeah uh i i love the point you make about there's no villain like i love songs that don't have a chorus you think how can you make that happen structurally it's just hard to do you need to make it really well and it's hard they, to make a rom-com without like a villain or without a like real the like jock like yeah. he's cheating on her or whatever like no he's a loving husband yeah and he's just hoping that she didn't just marry him for a green card which mm-hmm. is also something that he throws out there shut yeah. out that guy is, uh, what a character. marrying for a green card and just like settling because it's the person that came across your your kind of just part of the journey. Like he basically says, like, would you have accepted any other like white guy who just re- reads all the same books as you? Yeah. OK, so I, I really haven't been dumping too many negatives out on any of these movies, which speaks to a, a strong class. The quasi negative is that it's it it maxes out something that is not going to be the best thing you've ever seen like it's in the cat like this type of movie which is you agree gourmet rom-com yeah like a rom-com usually is not going to be the best thing you've ever seen this is going to be one of the better rom-coms you've seen though so it's like it maxes out for that reason at like an 80 85 ish type of thing just because it's kind of tough to to be an amazing thing in its genre. Yeah. It's the best version of a lower stakes genre. Yeah, but like I... And I, I hate I, that's a negative, I but that's just that's like... that. That's like... It's just why it's probably not going to win Best Picture. Yeah, so that's a better way to put it. Like, it's, it's not a negative in general. Maybe it's a negative when you say, like, here's why something is a pro for Best Picture and a, and a con for Best Picture. Right. So uh, th- I agree with that. That's fair. I have nothing uh, for cons. I love this movie so letterbox much. Letterboxd me. Five out of five for me. Five out of five. Whoa. Okay, so... I have four out of five that can jump up to a four and a half out of five. So just because we're a little, so we can be a little closer and reach out and touch hands, I'll give you a four and a half out of five. That is past lives. Uh, truly, we recommend you see all these movies. I really do give a full, 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 full recommendation on this. This is the fullest recommendation I could give, and it's like a perfect date night movie. It's a perfect anytime Ooh. movie, but a perfect date night movie. Mm, it's a perfect date for uh, a date night movie for the, someone who's reached out to you on Facebook from like back in the day. Yeah, when say you were hey, let's go old. see. Right, let's go see this movie. It might uh, do a little something for us. Okay, that's past lives. Bye. <laughs>